It's been over a year since Daniel last attended an RLCS LAN, but he'll be heading to Copenhagen for the first major of the season with G2. He's played phenomenally well to kick off his campaign this year, leading G2 and scoring with just under a goal a game, and doing so in a variety of ways. He has the whole left side of the goal open here, but goes back to the basics by shooting behind Aqua to deny any chances of a miracle save. Daniel's solo attempts have been another way he's been able to raise his goal tally, and he might have the most elegant aerial game in the world right now. Take this undulating aerial play for example, where he sneaks it underneath the first defender, then scoops it back over the second, but stays glued to the ball so he can block the clear and 50 it back to his teammates. The pace at which he plays helps too, transitioning seamlessly from defence to offence here with this catch and carry downfield, and by giving no time for the defence to organise he creates confusion which leads to plays like these. He's incredibly boost efficient. He only has 23 boosts once he springboards off the sidewall, but that's enough to play it past one defender whilst beast mode takes care of the second. This time is to the ceiling from Daniel, and following it up with a reset but tracking it to the goal line to force it in with the 50. He doesn't get his landing right here, but recovers beautifully with a pre-flip to catch and carry it over first killer, and then somehow finds a way to create just enough separation to go for a reset and float it over a mesmerized chronic. Rather than using his dodge to initiate a carry, Daniel occasionally likes to use a second jump to reposition himself to where he wants to be. It can also help him reach the ball in awkward positions like this bounce off the curve, using it to realign himself to the trajectory of the ball. Or on this play where he comes off the backboard and slips back underneath the ball so he can push it forward to set up his teammate with an aerial bump. Here's another aerial bump, this time coming off the sidewall and using his dodge to play the ball into the middle whilst he moves ahead to clear the way for Atomic. Daniel's been a great playmaker for his team, making use of his mechanical gifts to create unique opportunities for his teammates. This looks like a solo play until he manoeuvres to the right to open up an angle for a pass inside, and it's a beautiful read off the curve here, combined with a perfectly placed ball into the middle to serve it up to Atomic behind. Daniel's ability to beat defenders and play into the seams of a defense also opens up passing options. He pops the ball out off the back wall to set up his next touch that knocks it up and over creams, and puts him on the side wall where he now has an angle to play a pass in field to beast mode. His gravity can pull defenders towards him, 5-up gets up early so Daniel takes it high and again exposes the lack of interior help. He takes a wide approach to line up this bullet to Atomic, and combines with him to finish on the aerial bump play. This time he's the one ahead of the ball, zooming up the ball to take it away from Jack by diverting it down to his teammates below. The defense is expecting a shot here with Daniel so close to goal, so instead of shooting he plays a nice extra pass off the back wall, essentially leaving it open with Wavy out the play and Creams now awkwardly positioned on the back wall. As graceful as he is on the ball, his off ball play is quite the opposite. He's constantly searching for bumps and demos, especially when he's rotating back turning back upfield to bump Hockey not once but twice here to create space for beast mode. It's Hockey who's searching for the bump in this one, but Daniel ducks out the way to go for his own bump onto Creams, dispossessing him and handing over a free ball to Atomic behind. He's gone for some stealthy last man demos too, he's sneaking up behind Jack here but Jack's able to sniff it out at the last second. He takes a quick detour into the middle in this play that catches Percy off guard, and as well as the bumps and demos, Daniel also loves to disrupt the recoveries of opposing players, sending Percy into orbit here and throwing Zaneo an awkward ball so he can go and bother his recovery on the back wall, giving Atomic an uncontested shot from the corner. Not every single one of Daniel's bumps have had a positive outcome however. He grabs the corner here and immediately turns inside to search for demos, but ends up burning through the whole 100 by the time he's reached his own goal. He pushes hard for a bump again here onto Jack, but then suddenly finds the ball at his feet in an awkward position with no boost to work with. He locks onto LJ on his way back here when he should really be covering the centre. Daniel should hover right about here, but he carries that momentum all the way into the goal because he's so fixated on the demo. He throws off the rotation again here as he looks for bumps onto Chronic and Jack, but ultimately ends up taking the corner of Beast Mode who adds salt to the wound by taking his own trip to the other corner leaving Daniel by himself to push the ball out of defense. In this one, Daniel comes from the opposite corner to demo Jack, but expends all his boosts in the process. The next ball is left uncontested because he's upset the rotation, and now all three of them are scrambling back to get into position. 
Atomic in beast mode end up double committing because of the confusion and leaving Daniel helpless on the goal line. G2 have tried not to leave their last man vulnerable. Daniel does immensely well to turn back into the play here to assist beast mode and avoid putting him in a potential 2v1. But this hasn't been a consistent theme for G2. Oftentimes the priority is boost, so they'll take wide rotations back that leave large gaps in their defense. It's wide open inside again here with neither Daniel or Atomic wanting to take initiative to turn back and challenge. And it's not just when they transition back from offense, but also when they get low on boost defensively. Having all three of your players in one corner is never a good sign, because that means there's space left open somewhere else, and bad things are bound to happen by constantly pathing to the corners like this. Daniel almost subconsciously wanders to the corner here in search for boost, and ends up colliding into Atomic who's coming down off the back wall doing the same thing, and they end up conceding a goal that should never be going in. They've had problems challenging together too, Daniel zooming around everywhere here, and similarly on this next one, where he descends off the ceiling to force the ball, only to be met with Atomic forcing it too. Then there's some panic generated as the ball floats over beast mode and into the hands of first killer. Daniel rushes his challenge back, but they end up getting away with it as Jack hits it off the crossbar. There's more miscommunication here, there's no immediate challenge from Daniel since he's collecting pads, and then Atomic takes too long on his challenge, and at this distance it's almost impossible to react to a shot. The objectives on defense are to be as boost efficient as possible, to remain calm and composed, and to keep plays simple and predictable for your teammates, and G2 aren't doing any of those things. Daniel's obviously played his part with some rotational errors, but as a collective G2 just haven't meshed together yet defensively. Poor communication and bad positioning has led to confusion when challenging in the defensive end, and Beast Mode and Atomic have suffered from some of the same symptoms as Daniel, with their pathing and rotations often revolving around boost too. On the other hand, Daniel's ability to bump players and disrupt their recoveries makes it look extremely infuriating to play against him at times, but he'll also have to refine this part of his game to know when and when not to press hard for demos. Daniel compensates for his occasional off-ball struggles with his on-ball play. Offensively, he links up well with his teammates, and he's been a great goal scorer too, doing it both the fundamental way, but also with style. And those silky skills in the air, and that overall fluidity of his game, is really what distinguishes Daniel, and makes him one of Rocket League's most mesmerizing talents.